Искам а, първо да ви представя а, нашия гост, а, господин а, Игор Смешко, който е, е генерал полковник от запаса. А, а, можете да прочетете данните за него в а, интернет. А, той е представен достатъчно добре а, там. Това е съветник а, сега на президента Петро Порошенко. Човекът, който обаче аз искам да представя така, това е един от хората, които предотвратиха насилието на Майдана и успяха да обезвредят а, а, силите на Беркут а, и да не допуснат а, а, включване на украинската армия в този конфликт, който, ако се беше случило, можеше да доведе до непредвидими последици. Така че това е един от хората, които, на които дължим а, а, преодоляването на, 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 на политическата криза в а, тази съседна на, на страна. А, другия... И познатия ви съорганизатор, негово превъзходителство, посланник Никола Балтаджи, Украина. А, позволете ми няколко думи в началото. А, до истината за Украина а, можем да се доближим а, като изясним какво точно търсим да научим за тази страна. В българския дебат а, тази истина се представя като украинска криза, така се нарича. Точно ли обаче названието украинска криза? Москва дестабилизира страната с цел да не допусне президента Янукович да подпише договор за асоциране с Европейския съюз. Тази политическа криза, в която влезе Украина, свърши с избора на новия президент. Но Киев не контролира Крим, сили на които бяха дадени коридори да се изтеглят към Русия, организират въоръжени сблъсъци в някои източни области. Ще спрат ли тези усилия за дестабилизиране, след като руският външен министр заяви, че Москва няма да налага санкции, цитирам на Украина в случай на асоциране на Киев с Европейския съюз. Нашият отговор на лабораторията е, че няма да спрат. Защото дестабилизирането на Украина е само епизод от геополитически конфликт, който беше започнат от Москва с анексирането на Крим и с нарушаването на будапещенските договорености за украинското ядрено разоръжаване. Когато Украина подпише економическата част от договора си за асоциране към Европейския съюз, Русия ще загуби стратегически конфликта за европейски или за, евразийски, или за евразийска ориентация на Украина. Това вероятно ще стане на 27 юни тази година. Кремъл ще премине в отбрана. За да задържи Крим, да запази отслабващия си газов рекет върху Европейския съюз и да разчита на кризата в съседната си братска страна, като пример за назидание. Русия се противопоставя стратегически на европейското разширяване към страни, бивши република на Съветския съюз или сателити, които самата Русия смята за своя сфера на традиционно влияние. Искам отличен опит да кажа, че в края на 90-те години към тази сфера в Петърсберг бе направен опит да бъде формално, официално причислена България. Основните средства са предизвикване на политически кризи, военни сблъсъци и разпокъсване. Но в момент е, че сега Москва ще се опита да отклони вниманието от стратегическата си загуба в Украина, вкарвайки в криза други страни. Тук може да се види връзка с политическата криза, която започна в България 
след спирането на Южен поток. Кризата бе предшествана от предизборна кампания, в която българи застанаха срещу българи, заради руски интереси. Партии се отказаха от европейския избор на своя народ. Обявиха се за Евразия и посочиха Европейския съюз като източник на всички злини за България. Ние сме сред страните, които са най-уязвими и заплашени от подобна стратегия на конфронтация. Лабораторията за управление на рискове в Нов Българския университет прогнозира, а до сега ние не сме сбъркали в прогнозите си, гордеем се с това, прогнозирахме, че Кремъл ще загуби конфронтацията с Брюксел и Вашингтон в следващите 6 години. Колкото повече позиции губи в тази конфронтация, толкова повече ще се нуждае от плашещи примери на изпаднали в политическа, етническа, економическа и социална криза страни членки на Европейския съюз, за да покаже неговата безперспективност и обреченост, каквато е основната пропагандна теза на Кремъл. Нов, частичен успех при федерализация на голяма страна като Украина ще засили старите амбиции за подкопаване на Европейския съюз. За това истината за Украина е от най-голямо значение за нашата национална сигурност. Благодаря ви и ви позволете сега да дам думата за встъпление на нашия гост господин Игор Смешков. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, I will speak with your permission in English. I do understand, I think, 100% in Bulgarian, but unfortunately I cannot speak fluently Bulgarian until now. Really, it's very important, and thank you very much for the invitation for my country right now, and I think for you, Europe, and all the world, to know the real truth about very painful um, crisis in our relations with the Russian Federation. Basically, as a professional soldier, I might tell you that we have just war, announced war, and uh, to our eastern regions, <coughs> which uh, is led uh, against us. But why it occurred? Why, let's say, Ukraine without the shooting a single uh, uh, time in Crimea just uh, gave uh, out our uh, legitimate territory? Why right now so painful we have the blood on our territory? There are several reasons for the situation which occurred. One inspired outside, one unfortunately because of weakness of our current government. This conflict, this is conflict not between the Russian people, let's say, and Ukrainian people. This is conflict between two civilizations. Few words, what does Ukraine for Russia and what is Russia for Ukraine? This myth about the elder and younger brother, historically not right. This is territory Ukraine of ancient Rus state, which gave Christianity and gave the first statehood to the Moscovitia. In uh, 1612, in Kremlin, stationed Polish troops with entity of Ukrainian Cossacks at the part of uh, Rech Pospolita in those days. But in 1648, Bogdan Khmelnytsky, when he started war against the uh, Rech Pospolita for independence of Orthodox Church Ukraine state from uh, Catholic Rech Pospolita faith, we by ourselves earned our independence, and this is land of the free farmers and free Cossacks, 
which after voluntary joined Moscow state, we protected this Moscow state from main enemy in those days in 17th century in the era from Rech Pospolita. We weakened Rech Pospolita and we even protected from the south uh, Moscow state from Tatars and Turkey. Majority of the Russian Imperial Army among the sergeants corps were Ukrainians as an Red Army. Second uh, big entity of officers corps, this is Ukrainians. By the way, historically, I think it's also an important thing. You know who uh, has had the first order of St. Andrew, number one, which were given by Peter Gray? This was uh, Hetman Mazepa, Ukrainian Hetman Mazepa. And this land of Ukrainian land until the Catherine Great basically had autonomous ruling. And slavery, feudal slavery, was in territory of Ukraine less than one century. After the third dividing of Poland, uh, 1795 until 1861, there was attempt to make totally feudal ruling on this territory, by the way, with the lords from Polish, but it didn't succeed. It. And this is the grave difference between, first of all, both population. What was very afraid about for the current government in Moscow? The Orange Revolution 2004 did show for the whole the world that Ukraine already has civil society. Civil society which didn't tolerate when in 2004 was attempt to put on the first position uh, the person with two criminal uh, charges and uh, population mostly in Ukraine didn't believe that it was uh, free elections and millions of people went on streets and defended their opinion. It was the first sign for President Putin, unfortunately, that this is completely different type of governance and civilization, painfully, but European model of democracy are coming to the border with the Russian Federation. The second Maidan was completely disaster for the President Putin and his close entourage right now, because he did stake on Mr. Yanukovych. Basically, uh, Russia supported regime of Yanukovych and tried to establish the same system of authoritarian regime in Ukraine like it is in Russia. But the difference is, in Russia, the majority of this authoritarian regime, this is old security officers from the KGB background, there is an authoritarian uh, system of governance uh, with controlling everything, finance, economy, security sector, even organized crime. But in Ukraine, with the regime of Yanukovych, with the help of Kremlin, they try to establish the same model with the criminals ahead. And criminals started to control even with their model of ruling security sector of Ukraine. Uh, Vilnius summit was the trigger, and by the way, one of myth that the West in spirit this uh, uh, second Maidan and Kyiv. It was student Maidan. The first Maidan which started in Kyiv immediately after the Vilnius summit, it was student Maidan and even in Lviv uh, the same Maidan didn't permit the representative of Svoboda party, member of parliament, to go on the stage and to have the speech. The students were completely against all flags even of opposition. They rose on the independent Ukraine. And this was the sign once again. We have the developed civil society in the country. These protests were brutally uh, destroyed and the first blood was from the side of government decided to use the same, uh, uh, let's say, strategy 
uh, against protesters like it possible do in Russia. In Ukraine, it's impossible. The second revolution, revolution of dignity, uh, stopped dictatorship of Yanukovych. But to build democracy, this is not to stop dictators. And it occurred that in my country, we have the civil society, I think, maybe 10, 15 years ahead of our political elites and the power right now. The coalition government, which uh, was immediately, immediately established, unfortunately, they used the party quotas for nomination on key positions. And at the same time, our government didn't have any strategy how to defend themselves against the possible Russian invasion. Uh, I was more than 10 years uh, the head of intelligence community of my country. I can assure, in all our strategic plan, we didn't see a single day that the Russia might be our enemy. Even our armed, uh, armed forces uh, uh, configuration, this is all Soviet type configuration we have all in the West. On the East, we didn't have uh, real uh, detachment of our armed forces. And Russian Federation, unfortunately, beginning from the first Maidan, already started to main strategy toward Ukraine. What does mean Ukraine for current leadership in the Russian Federation? 150 million, 150,000 million people live on one of the six territories of the world. Uh, in Far East, this is one, two person per square kilometers. In Ukraine, we have almost 50 million Slavic people, majority. In the Russian Federation, there would be soon the severe problem in the army, even they have the majority of the Slavic population. Uh, for Russian Federation, right now, and the system of governance of Russia, any robust European model of democracy, this is the main threat for integrity of the country. All the other, unfortunately, it was very skillful, very good orchestrate use of four elements of state power. The first, economy. The second, diplomacy. The third, we saw the military, but the most important, information war which was started against Ukraine, just to prove this is fake state. The state cannot just uh, uh, exist. Uh, the government very weak. It's really weak, but the propaganda which was used was made in full response of uh, art of war, and very skillful was provided. I'm not speaking about the fifth column, which were established for the last years of regime Yanukovych and all powerful ministers of Ukraine. Uh, Russian citizens basically were the two last uh, ministers of defense. Uh, chairman of security service immediately escaped with all information uh, abroad. Basically, we had two chairmen of security service, which uh, second day when they were released, they escaped from the country with all information which they had. The Chief of Foreign Intelligence, Minister of Interior Affairs, General Prosecutor, and so on and so on. Um, what we right now have, if you just look Nezavisimaya Gazeta, Independence newspaper, Russian newspaper, just open the Google uh, 24 May last year, round table chaired by the full general Baluyevsky, the former chief of general staff of Russian Federation. And on this round table, there are a lot of very interesting participants. Uh, Igor uh, Strelkov, how he named him. Uh, one lady, uh, basically this lady, um, officially reporter of Anna agency, which uh, came only before this round table from Syria. Uh, right now, she's in the custody in Kyiv. 
This lady was arrested with the three trucks full of armaments on the border of Ukraine. And a lot of other very interesting uh, experts, uh, officers, high ranking. But what the subject of this round table was? War in Syria and the lessons for Russia. How to use the war or controlled house to get national interest in the country which is object of interest for us. With all elements, infiltration of terrorists, uh, infiltration to the opposition, and making the clash between the government and opposition with the blood. After this, prepare opinion and to make the platform for invention with peacekeeping operation and main slogan, oh, Americans do this in Syria. Why we are not use the same methods in our national interests? And by the way, uh, this is official strategic of the government of Russia, that Ukraine cannot be in any uh, rate member of NATO and cannot be the member of European Union. This is national interest of Russian Federation openly proclaimed. That is, we right now have in my country, first of all, really, the government system was completely destroyed as independent system during the last four years. I might tell you that it started, unfortunately, even from the, uh, 2005. You know that when we uh, used to have the first Maidan 2004, uh, usually the protests is in the situation of weak economy, uh, disaster in economy. You know that uh, President Kuchma finished his term of duty with the national economic growth uh, Twelve and a half percent per year, the highest in Europe. Basically, for the last uh, three years of his presidency, he made several initiatives in the taxation system to help uh, of creation the middle class in the country for small and middle business. We have the highest percentage of economic growth. This is middle class, which basically protested against uh, President uh, Kuchma. But after this, unfortunately, it was disaster of ruling of President uh, uh, Yushchenko. Unfortunately, in the eastern our regions, many, even right now, think, oh, this was democracy. This is American-type democracy of Yushchenko. Yushchenko was the most lazy, incompetent, the president which we had, he started the first this um, practice of political appointees and the all-powerful ministries. What does it mean? Can you imagine that someone, political loyalist from the street, uh, receiving the position of full general uh, with all responsibility? In the West, there is this kind of uh, uh, practice, but it balanced by the law, by the tradition, because if party uh, have 50 percent of support, but this is not the nation, and party representative in power ministry with the special uh, possibilities to influence for the life of country, without outside control of the opposition, of the parliament, of the jurisdictional system, it's very dangerous because any political party might uh, do anything to be forever in the power. In the West it's balanced, and the responsibility of these political appointees is not the hundred percent for the full general. One example, once again, the chief of uh, uh, joint uh, staff in the United States, this is number one military. And Ministry of Defense of United States, he cannot give the order even to the soldier uh, near his office to move two steps. Uh, he didn't give the epaulets, he didn't give the position of commander of regiments. Uh, this is chief of uh, joint staff does this. But if he will go to the, let's say, Democratic Party, uh, Assembly or Republican Party and officially would support, he will finish his career. In my country, unfortunately, this president 
brought to the power for the old law enforcement, intelligence, uh, armed forces, political loyalists, but with full responsibility of full generals. And they immediately started to make his uh, vertical of uh, loyalists. And uh, after Yushchenko, Yanukovych used this precedent in his benefit brilliantly. He did put on key positions people which more have ability to work as organized crime group in the government than the real patriot of Ukraine. That is why our temporary weakness and our government system, plus very skillful work of uh, our strategic opponent right now, because, you know, even officially right now, by our documents still adopted by the parliament, we have strategic partnership with the Russian Federation. Even right now, our engineers uh, working on 50 silos with the most heavy ICBMs of Russians and uh, basically maintained the, their ability as uh, the chief designer of this missile. This is Yuzhu Mash in Dnipropetrovsk. Uh, we were not prepared to fight with this enemy. We were not prefer, uh, prepared that when in Kyiv students, people just gave their blood to stop dictatorship and the most weakened situation with us, we received the knife uh, from the country in which we believe this is our strategic partner. Um, 2003 I was uh, Deputy National Security Advisor. This uh, was time when we suggested to Parliament adopt uh, the first uh, law on our national security and defense priority. And there was. And the long term, we want to be the member of Euro Atlantic uh, military organization. But the second part of this uh, uh, sentence even was written with the preserving strategic partnership with the Russian Federation. Basically, it was a blocking, uh, 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 blocking sentence. Once again, I'm finishing. This is very skillful war, which are used through the new model of destroying inside the country stability with preparation, public opinion, inside uh, country aggressor and outside the world in his favor and just to conduct their national how they see the interest with the new type of war, war of controlled house which is controlled outside. We are teaching, we are teaching, we are making mistakes but we are teaching and once again unfortunately the President Putin even right now I think doesn't understand properly that Ukrainians, this is ancient Cossacks. This is free men, free warriors, free farmers. And for us, we even have this saying, to Ukrainians, three hetmans. Uh, it's impossible, it's impossible in this country to build the system of government with the Tsar. Uh, you might name, any name this, and to establish authority, uh, especially when the people feel this is uh, basically criminals, but not real authority. That is, we have very good news. We have a legitimate president of Ukraine. By the way, the first legitimate president of Ukraine, which has brilliant education, very good background, uh, fluently speak foreign languages, and I think right now we have really good sign in Tunnel. We want, as soon as possible, peace in our land. All the other, this is reform. Reform of disintegration of the power, giving the most responsibility for the uh, regions. And in our first chapter, in our constitution, by the way, I think one of the best constitution uh, in Europe is that we are democracy. But the problem is that, unfortunately, last two presidents they didn't do anything in the law. 
which is supposed to be under the Constitution, to implement independence three branch of power, to give the more responsibility for the regions to control uh, finance, to control governance in these regions, and in some way control the central government. Right now, we have very good uh, opportunities, uh, very fast to move, uh, uh, to move ahead. And once again, we really appreciate support of the country from which basically to us came the basic Christianity, uh, which gave to us our grammar, uh, with which we had all the time very, very big historical ties. It's very once again bad that uh, there isn't in German, French, English difference of words, Ruski and Rasiski. This is different words, Ruski and Rasiski. And for Ukrainians, until 70th century, uh, in all the maps, just to look, even to look for all documents of Reich Pospolita when uh, we were part. Uh, there was Hetman uh, uh, Polski, Hetman Litovski, and Voivoda Ruski. Uh, in 17th century, uh, on all maps, arrived the name of Ukraine. Uh, by the way, earlier, then, with Peter the Great, arrived the name of Russia, Russia, Ni. Unfortunately, a lot of myths will be ahead, but we on our own land, this is Asian, Ruska, Zemlya, we will fight for our independence, and unfortunately, our Russian, I don't want to say that once again, the strategic opponents, but unfortunately, they don't understand also a very simple thing. We are not Euro Asia, European state, our home Europe. This is a huge problem for Russian Federation. Yes, they are Euro Asian state. They are supposed to think about this big territory, but maybe this is the most strategic mistake of current government in Russia. They don't want a very good to look in the history. Peter Great made window to Europe to modernize the country, to become a powerful country. He didn't make uh, the window to the East. Uh, in one of my first uh, interviews, I think, uh, Le Figaro, I said that basically the President Putin uh, did open the case of Pandora. Who will prohibit China in 10, 15 years just to claim we have the rights to protect the Chinese-speaking uh, population in the Far East when one, two people on square kilometers and almost two billion uh, of Chinese uh, on the border. And this very dangerous thing. I'm not speaking about the protocol of Budapest. We had the third nuclear arsenal of the world. We voluntarily gave these uh, armaments. Uh, Russian Federation and the United States in those days did everything just to disarm us. And we received this protocol. Unfortunately, we are with the protocol, but for the future, thank you for lessons. We these lessons understood we very powerful country. The main enemy for the West and East and two Maidans were against this. These enemies, corruption and the government, destroying of law enforcement uh, and jurisdictional system, an attempt to build uh, autocratic regime. This is enemy with which we will fight and we want to be with you. We want to be and society of European nations and to build the real democracy in which territory is very important, but the most important to protect the personal rights, liberty and dignity of the citizens of this country. Thank you.